Well, hello guys and welcome to another sermon on our Tribulation Soldier Comms YouTube and Facebook. I most certainly hope that you're all well. Uh, it's getting a lot colder here in Scotland now, so we are really on it. Quite cold in the garage down here, down in the motorbike garage, but um, I'm sure we'll manage. Yes, yeah, so a lot's going on just now, guys, and as I always say, you know, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit notifications if you like our videos, that'd be awesome. And as always, we've got our Barney family YouTube channels, and we've got three YouTube channels for our kids as well, so we've got loads and loads online for you. This is the sermon time of the week, and of course, it's a, a real moment for me during the week. I just love this time, you know, just to all sit and share God's word. Because it's a really important subject, you know, about being happy. You know, having those wounds and scars from the past, you know, and getting past that and actually finding that real joy and that real happiness. So that's what we're going to touch on today. Yeah, so just in the garage again and, you know, I've been working really hard on the horse field, horse stable. I know it's maybe not for everyone, you know, but it's, a, it's quite a big part of what we're doing at the moment, you know, online. So finally got our horsey Herbie and he's just a cracker. I am absolutely in love with that horse, I'll tell you. He is just a cracker. A lot to learn though, you know, and disciplining them is all a, a kind of new thing to me when it comes to horses, you know. I'm the one that's got to do a bit of discipline now, and it's not easy. You can act like a, a spoiled teenager at times, you know, but 95% of the time, just a darling, just an absolute darling. So, yeah, I was want to share today about how God, you know, sort of deals with our issues, deals with our problems, you know, those things from the past. A lot of the time, you know, we might feel hungry, you know, and unhappy inside, but actually, you don't even know why. You know, why, why am I just unhappy? Why, you know, do I still feel this way? Why do I feel angry? And emotional pain can be really hurt us, you know, mentally and even physically at times, you know. Even physically, you know, you could be a person's angry, you know, worrier and, you know, stomach acid, don't feel good, you know, can't sleep at nights, you know, and all those sort of things, you know. And when you are a Christian, that's something God wants to deal with. Again, these sermons, guys, are sort of more based towards, you know, those that you might not necessarily believe. But, um, you know, if you are quite an experienced Christian, it's good to come back to this stuff. And I have to say that I've probably met very, very few people that walk through this life that don't have scars and open wounds from the past. Very, very few. Uh, from all walks of life, you know. Generally, more often than not, you know, people do. And um, it's just part of life. It's the things that we go through. Many of these things wasn't what God wanted, especially serious stuff. But they happen. This is this life. This is what this life is like. But when God's, I can't say in control of your life. I just can't do that. God doesn't control. When God is your life, He's a huge part of your life. You know, He can deal with these things. And there's a lovely scripture verse that's very easy to say, but it's it's different to play out in reality is the truth shall set you free and God is an absolute master at doing these things and you know having counseled Christians before and ministered to Christians you know all different types of situations marriages problems issues drugs you know all that sort of stuff you know you just get blown away by his genius so here's one for you I'll just give you a little one and mum's probably watching this sermon as well she'll remember this but um, when I first came back to the Lord in about 2002, you know, I had a lot of problems anyway, you know. I just stuffed my life up, you know, and I had next to nothing, you know. I'd really just ruined my life sort of thing, you know. So I had quite a process of this, getting these issues and stuff dealt with, you know, over the months and over the years. And it doesn't have to be like that for every Christian. It's just the way I was. I had this real anger that I couldn't really quite figure out what it was. And generally when you've got those real big roots of anger, it kind of goes back to your childhood, you know, your parents or, you know, how you're brought up and stuff like that. And, you know, as, as well, a lot of father-son relationships, it can get quite strained, especially in teenage years and maybe into the 20s. And when I look back at my childhood, I thought it'd be like dad, you know, that'd be the one that I was angry towards and stuff like that. But to my amazement, God showed me it was mum. My mum has been a Christian since, you know, the year dot, following God all the time, following God every day. 
you know, a great example to me of compassion and long suffering and all these things that is a part of the Christian life. But I find that I was angry with her. And this is a real source of anger. And I didn't really understand why or how to deal with it. But what God began to show me was, which was really, really great. And guys, you know, when you've encountered God, you know it's God dealing with you in your life. I had a lot of anger towards mum because of her Christian life. You know, when I was a teenager, I wasn't walking with God at all. And um, a, a lot of the time, you know, when I needed her, um, it just seemed like her church friends came first, you know. Church came first, God came first. And, um, you know, when I needed her, she wasn't there. But, you know, when our friends needed her, Christian friends, boom, she was off, you know. And it was just, you know, because you're growing up, you need advice, you need guidance, you need comfort, you need, you know, good laugh, all that sort of things. But mum, mum tended to be that way. So now God had shown me not the symptoms, but a real root to the anger that was in my life, the anger that was really holding me back from kind of real joy and, and real happiness. So he showed me, and he showed me the couple of moments, it's just amazing how he does it, this couple of moments where your anger really birthed. And I remember when my grandfather died, um, we were at his funeral, and this Christian woman kind of she was obviously grieving and she, you know and she wasn't noticing but she barged into me and I had to sort of go back and then she was in front of me at my granddad's funeral these strangers these Christian strangers I was angry I was angry at that very very angry towards mum for that so God had now shown me that and I was like wow you know I, I, I never even considered that I never thought that was the issue but that wasn't the anger gone the truth shall set you free. The real truth sets you free. And it's just the way God does it. And he showed me how much mum needed her Christian friends back then. The kind of stuff that she was going through. That I was oblivious to. I was just, you know, a teenager. I was like, drinking and, you know, doing all sorts of stuff. But she needed her Christian friends. She was struggling. She was having hardships. She wasn't a, an old person back then. She was young. And she just struggled to deal with a lot of different things. And that's why she needed her Christian friends. And that's why she needed church. And God just shows you so clearly what the problem is. And then floods you with that place where you can just forgive. And you can go, I understand. I understand. I get it. And the relief and the release is just awesome. It really, really is awesome. But I keep talking about the how. You know, how does this actually happen? How does God do these things? Well, when you're a Christian, you've experienced him. You know what he feels like. You know what the state of mind is like, the, the sort of peace, the, the feel that you get from God. So you can very much tell that God's dealing with something. You know, there's maybe something that really needs dealt with in your life, a chain that's really holding you back from a true happiness. Another thing we've got to understand when it comes to God is that God doesn't waste his time with symptoms. You know, you might be angry, you know, that there's a root to that anger, but it's affecting your life, it's showing symptoms at work, in your marriage, in your family life, or, you know, whatever that might be. But it's that anger's coming through, and you don't know why. God isn't going to take your job, for example, and try and fix this, and then try and fix another symptom, and that's another symptom. He just doesn't do that. He goes for the root of the problem every time. And let me tell you from absolute experience, fighting symptoms all the time is a really, really difficult thing. It's like a great big fire raging, but instead of dealing with that fire, you're dealing with all the little fires that that's creating. But that, you see, you're trying to stop all these little fires out instead of actually going for the source, the big fire, and extinguishing that. And that's what God does. And one of the words that I think most Christians uh, not struggle, struggle with and stuff, but it's very accustomed to is waiting on God. It's actually being patient and waiting. He can show you what the root of the problem is, but not quite show you the remedy yet. And the reason he does that is because a lot of these situations just don't involve just us. They involve other people, like my mum. He has to get other people set up in this to make this happen 
to be in a place where mum's in a place where she gets what happened. And I'm in a place where we can meet together with that. This is just one example of many, many issues that a person can have. I'm just naming one little thing between me and my mum. And when it comes to God transforming your life, there may be other issues that he's got to take care of before he even takes care of this. So guys, when it comes to these sort of things, it really is being patient. It's putting your faith in God. Because you have to remember when it comes to God, when you experience God, you know that he already knows the root of the problem before it even started. And he knows the time he's going to deal with it. He knows what needs to be done. He knows the people that need to be done. We don't. He does. And when you've experienced God, you can really, 95% of the time, really trust that. You can write, okay, you've shown me. I can kind of see it. I don't feel that relief in that release, you know, from that particular issue. But God's got to get all these things set up. He's got to prepare hearts. He's got to move things into position. It's like a chess game. He's got to move things into position. And that takes time. But the outcome, guys, just surprise. I would say surprise. The relief and the release from that. And looking at it and thinking, my goodness, is that what it was? You know, all this time, that's what the issue was. And God's also giving you that strength to be able to forgive and understand and really see it for what it is. Even in situations you think, I'll never forgive for that. I'll never be able to forgive for that. Guys, you will be surprised when he brings you to that place that you never thought would happen. And I used mum as a bit of a, a, an example today because it was just really odd. It just so unexpected, you know. But God, I've seen over and over again, time and time again, with people with real serious open wounds that are infected and bleeding. God coming straight in to deal with that root and removing and healing that open wound. And the real serious stuff in life, the real serious hurt, the real serious issues. I've seen them more than once. Oof, more than a hundred, probably more than that. He's a deal with some very serious issues in my life. Real big scars, real big gashes. Why? Because he loves you. And he sent he sent to you the truth shall set you free. Well, what does that verse mean? What does that mean from God? He wants you to be free. And these chains from the past are holding you back from that. You might have even given your life to the Lord. There's many people that, that give their life to Jesus, guys, and they are just, just absolutely. But for many Christians, it takes a little bit of time. You wean from one life to the other. And God deals with these chains so that you do not have to walk through life with them at all. You might see one of the old sermons, you know, one of the previous sermons, I should say, about the Museum of Memories. Then those hurtful things just become a statue in a museum. Can't move. It's stuck behind glass. So you can walk into that museum anytime you want and take a look at it. So you can share with someone else and then just leave it again. That's what he does. And I know that, you know, many of us try to get the issues that we have in life sorted out through various, various areas. But guys, I'll tell you, fighting symptoms is really, very, very tiring. You never, ever come into the root of the problem. God knows the root of the problem. And I said in another sermon there, in dealing with these things, he is very, very, very good at it. So yeah, just... Just the way he does things, the relief, the release. You see the goodness of God and through that situation. You see how much he loves you, how much he wants you to be free. It's all good, the fruit that comes from it. And in the future, like me, you can share these things and help other people. It doesn't matter what it is, you can do it. Right, so for now guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Uh, you know, loads more sermons coming as always. and. If you do, like, subscribe and hit those notifications every time I share a, a sermon or a teaching or whatever it is we're going to be doing in the next little while, you'll get notifications for that. 
This is generally what we call the Thursday sermon. You know, this is going to be uh, my, my regular time of sharing. Might not always be in here, but it'll certainly be sharing in here. But whatever the place is, you know, if you're watching this in a year's time, it makes no difference at all about his cause, no matter how. So God bless you, thank you so much, and I'll always be here.